Hello, my name is Roy Childs from Team Focus, and in this video, I will explain how nearly all psychometric scores are just like different currencies. They have different names and different values, but one can be aligned with another. So one US dollar may be worth up to six Chinese yen, or it could be 110 Japanese yen. In the same way, an IQ of 115 may be the same as a percentile of 84 or a T-score of 60. And if you've never heard of some of these scales, by the end of this video, you will know the principles on which they are based. In learning to use psychometrics, you need to become a world traveler and understand the various psychometric currencies. Let me begin with the basics for understanding all of these scales. We assume that when we measure psychological attributes, they will follow similar patterns to other more physical attributes like height or weight. And when we measure these, we find that we get very few short people and very few very tall people. Most people cluster around the middle, the average height. We find, in fact, that they follow what is called the normal distribution. And the normal distribution looks like this. Now this distribution is very well studied and we can be very precise about the proportion of people that will fall within certain ranges away from the average as shown here. So now let's apply this to scores we may obtain from a personality questionnaire. Here is a typical profile sheet where the scores are on a scale of one to 10. The one to 10 scale represents the normal distribution like this. This shows us that the majority of people, in fact 68% of them, are score between 4 and 7. Hence scores 1, 2 and 3, or 8, 9 and 10, are quite rare, equivalent to our very tall or very short people. To become a world traveller in this psychometric world, you need to understand how the scales used all have a currency conversion. Here is the equivalent of the base currency, the dollar. It's called the Z scale. And if you are in T-score land, the conversions are shown here. However, the currency most people understand is the percentiles. Do note, however, that the percentiles do not have an even gradation. And for this reason, they are not always favored in reporting test scores. In personality measurement, one of the most common scales used is the standard 10 or Sten scale. And if you look at it, you will see that the majority of the people score between four and seven. Another well-known scale is the IQ scale, but this is not so easy to interpret. And the reason for this is that the gradations are sometimes in millimeters and sometimes in centimeters to use an analogy. So you will need to understand more fundamentally how these scales are then derived before you can interpret them accurately. Instead of a 10 point scale, sometimes we have what is called the stay nine scales, a nine point scale. So at the risk of repeating myself, let me emphasize the relationship between the two most common scales used in personality scaling, the Sten scale, and the most easily understood scale percentiles. A Sten score of one means that only 2% of the comparison group would score that low. Another 5% would get a Sten score of two, which means that they are scoring in the bottom 7% of the comparison group. And the percentile score is accumulation in this way. A score of three means scoring in the bottom 16% and so on. Hence, a Sten score of eight means that the person is scoring higher than 84% of the comparison group. There are, of course, tables that allow you to do these currency conversions easily, as shown here. Hence, a Sten score of four here spans the 16th to the 31st percentiles. But one final word of warning. Consider someone who completes a personality questionnaire 
measuring extroversion and they get a high score. Are they extrovert? Now imagine that I administer this questionnaire to salespeople attending the Miami sales convention. Imagine also that they are all raving extroverts. Note this is not necessarily true, but please bear with me. If they now become my comparison group, their distribution of scores could look like this. So my person's percentile score could change from being in the top 10% to being in the bottom 10%. But does that mean they have suddenly become introvert? Of course not. This raises very important issues concerning the idea about norm referencing personality scores. Because is the meaning of a score primarily about how we compare to others, or is it about how we express ourselves? Something which is at the heart of a type versus trait approach to personality, but that is covered more thoroughly in another video. For our purposes here, the key thing to remember is that percentiles change if you change the comparison group, and so no score should be used without a clear understanding of who the comparison group is. So thank you for listening and I hope this video has made some of the complexities of scoring and interpreting numbers in psychometrics a little clearer. You can contact us for more information at teamfocus at teamfocus.co.uk. Thank you again. Thank you.